Hello Virgo and welcome to your monthly horoscope for August. I'm going to give you the key strands to look out for. Please stay with me. I will then dive deep to give you in forensic detail each of the key influences and dates particularly relevant to your sign. Now as you come into this new month there is a big clustering of energy in the 12th house, which is the Sun, and your ruler Mercury. Mercury moves into your sign on the 4th to be replaced on the 11th by Venus. So those energies could see you thinking quite deeply about certain strands in your situation. But I've got fantastic news to share with you because on the 20th, you have an opportunity to make progress with your career, which is going to last for eight months. This is a very unique opportunity and it's actually quite rare. So I can't wait to share that with you. And also on the 23rd, the sun makes its way into your sign and the reflection makes way for being much more in the moment. And there's also an important new moon in your sign on the 27th. Your finances can also be assisted by Mercury moving on the 26th into your second solar house. So that's something that's important to share with you too. Now, before I go into that much deeper forecast for you, if you would like to engage with more serious astrology, if you tell me three pieces of personal data of time, date and place of birth, I can give you a roadmap that can guide you for the rest of your life. Also, within my special package of 30% off, I will also give you a 12-month personal forecast. Now, these are based totally on your personal data, so no two charts are the same. Please see the link below for more. Also, I've burst through the 100,000 subs mark on YouTube. If you'd be so kind to help me to get quickly to 101, I'd be honored. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. If you've been a long time subscriber to my channel, thank you so much. Your support means so much to me. Now, please stay with me as I share your deeper forecast. So as you come into August, Virgo, the sun, and also your ruler Virgo are in house 12. House 12 philosophically is the part of the year where we all take a little bit of time to really consider what has occurred over the previous year, 12 months, 12th house. And of course, we have the 12th zodiac sign, which is Pisces, which is very much in keeping with this process. But for you, this event occurs when the sun is in the sign of Leo. Now the sign of Leo has a reputation for warmth, for exuberance, uh, and for lively companionship. But for you, this could be a time when you may be a little bit more inclined to find some moments to yourself. And because you've got a lot of energy as you come into this month, pulsating away in the ninth house, in terms of Uranus, the planet of change, of freedom, of truth, and Mars, the planet of drive and passion, and the North Node, kind of what we're karmically bringing into our lives from our past deeds, they're all in house nine. So house 12 and house nine points towards the expansion, potentially, of your consciousness. But it also suggests that maybe you're going to need some space, maybe some emotional space, maybe some physical space. So I think they're going to be issues this month. But then on the 4th, Mercury makes its way into your sign, brings you a bit more into the moment. That's good. Also, the first 11 days of this month does see Venus for you in um, a very uh, bubbly part of your situation, uh, very much to do with your friendly interaction with others. But it too, on the 11th, moves into a much more thoughtful area. So I think relationships are going to go through uh, perhaps not necessarily uh, a definite down, but more a time of reflection. That's how we could express it best, I feel. 
And also, you know that Saturn, the planet of structure, restraint and constraint, is in your sixth house, very much in keeping with your own sign. Your natural ability to be very disciplined has been enhanced by this, but of course it's in retrograde now. And it's also in a right angle with Mars from the 3rd through to the 12th. And that could create a little bit of nervous tension, to be honest. Because you're someone who can take on challenges when it comes to being organised, disciplined, looking for tangible results with your work. You can be very dedicated, particularly supportive of other people. Um, you know, Virgos are, are vital people. But I feel that if you've been given a little bit too much of yourself, perhaps especially at work, there could be part of you that wants to break free of that. And if you can't quite do it because people can't swap shifts or your job's very demanding or your boss is not very availing, then there could be some tensions that come to the surface from the 3rd through to the 12th. But cast your mind back to last year. Saturn and Uranus, the two co-regents of Aquarius, were in conflict and that conflict came to an exact point three times in 2021 and within three degrees they were pretty close at the start of this year as well well this is a month when they're starting to come back together because of that Saturn retrograde but also on the 24th of this month Uranus goes into a retrograde which lasts through to the 21st of January next year and it will be the final outer higher octave planet to slam on the brakes. So that's tightening up as this month goes on so we do need to look at it and it's a bit of a, a repetition of the Mars square with Saturn but just in a slightly different way. Uranus has to find its voice in the ninth house because the ninth house is about higher truths and Uranus is the planet of honesty, in a way. It's also, of course, the planet of rebelliousness. The ninth house can be the law. Saturn in your sixth house is where you're being very dedicated. But if you're not being very satisfied within that dedication. So, for example, you could have a really well-paid job. But if it's a bit soulless, that can become an issue this month. And in fact, through to the end of this year. And the reason for this is that Uranus wants you to feel really stimulated. And if you're therefore giving of yourself, being very dedicated to the Saturn influence, and you're not getting much out of that give, then it can start to drain you. And Uranus can also affect your nervous system. So just be aware that energy is somewhat at a premium this month with the clash between Mars and Saturn and Saturn and Uranus, but also there's another one that goes on from the 12th to the 17th between the Sun and Saturn, and also Venus then goes opposite Saturn in the last week. So being too much of a good egg is not going to be good for you this month. And although you have Venus moving into your 12th house on the 11th, the full moon on the 12th is probably at that point this month the more critical influence because that is T squared by Uranus. So the full moon in house 12 against the moon in house 6 where Saturn is, T squaring up to Uranus in house 9. All of that could see some psychological issues. If you're someone who is very fit but you don't think about your emotions much, this full moon can ask you to do so. If you're someone who's a born again couch potato like my good self, then this is a full moon which is asking you to get a bit more physically in trim. Finding that balance between the more tangible world where Saturn and the moon are with the more psychological, emotional and spiritual world of where the sun is, is vitally important. Otherwise, Uranus in house nine could see stabs of tension or stabs of honesty come from other people that you're not expecting. So unfortunately, some fair weather friends or colleagues could be revealed on the back of this full moon for the following two weeks. That is unfortunately the reality. 
And because the sun goes into an opposition from the 12th through to the 17th with Saturn, your physical and emotional energy, I think, is going to be a bit low at that time. And with Venus in house 12, you could also feel a bit fretful if a relationship isn't working very well. Or if you're just on your own and you're wondering when you're ever going to meet your ideal partner. But there is some really good news that's possible that can come about. And that's from the 16th to the 20th when Venus and Jupiter come into a beautiful trine. Now these are the two planets of fortune. Jupiter are known as the greater benefit and Venus the lesser benefit. And when they connect in a trine, that's a very enabling link. Now of course Venus can be about money, but it can also be about relating. It can also be about aesthetics. But in house 12, this suggests some kind of surprise. And Jupiter is quite deep too in house eight. Maybe a legacy linked to the past. Maybe someone has got great appreciation for your generosity or kindness that you've showed in the past. And some kind of gift could come to you during this period of time. It could be that you could do something speculative, but I'm not sure about that. Um, but the other key event to tell you about, and this is what I referred to in the intro, is that on the 20th, Mars punches its way into your 10th house. The 10th house is where we gain visibility for our talents. It's about goals, ambitions. It's about work, responsibilities. It can be about management. It can also be uh, about uh, property matters. It can be linked to the father. It's quite Capricornian. But essentially, the 10th house is about ambition and Mars is about our ego. But the issue here is that Mars is entering this zone, not just for its usual six weeks. For you, it's been going through the previous six weeks through your sector of adventure. So you probably felt quite restless. But moving to the top of your chart is giving you an enormous platform right through to the 25th of March next year to really go towards new goals, new aims, to really reach for the sky and have the confidence to make a change if you're doing a job, as you can see with Saturn uh, toiling away and retrograde in your sixth house, or you have responsibilities and obligations to others that are cramping your freedom, Uranus in your ninth house, squaring with Saturn. Well, what this Mars influence is saying to you, if you need to set your sights on a new way of earning a living or a new way of gaining recognition for your talents, you know, whether they're musical or theatrical or uh, creative, uh, whatever it is that really you find inspires your passion, that's what Mars is going to trigger for eight long months. So very, very rare transit. So you need to seize that moment. Now the 23rd then sees the sun move into your sign. Some of the doubts and the self-analysis you've been going through will make way Energy can come into you, you can feel stronger. Uranus goes into a retrograde on the 24th, the last of the higher octave planets to do so. And that will be through to the 21st of January next year. So that need for freedom becomes less in the physical sense and more in the psychological sense. If you feel locked into anything and you feel a bit helpless, Uranus retrograde is pushing you to do something about it. Saturn in your sixth house in retrograde is asking you to keep being the decent giver but you can't pour from an empty bottle and if Uranus is suggesting to you that you're bored and unfulfilled the clash between the two of them which pretty well goes on for the rest of this year suggests with the with Mars having gone high in the sky in your chart that you need to think again but have the confidence to make a change now on the 26th Mercury moves out of your sign and into your second solar house. That could be good for finance, but just before that, from the 20th to the 25th, Mercury is in a fantastic link with Pluto. Your powers of penetration and perception and clarity, which are often immense, are just going to be turned up to a new high. So that's a wonderful window of opportunity. But Mercury into the second can see you grappling with the detail of your finance. So that's good. But... There is a link between Mercury and Mars in the last week. So, of course, Mars is in your sector of ambition and success. Mercury in the second house of money 
go figure. Mars is about go getting, Mercury is about how we think or express ourselves. You can express yourself in the last week of this month if you have the self-confidence with great passion and great persuasion. That's a real asset. Also Virgo, the new moon on the 27th in your sign is squaring with that position of Mars. So this is going to give you such a, a kind of catapult of energy to take into September. And if you really do want to do something more dynamic and make a big change, even if it rocks the boat in certain situations, perhaps even in a close romantic relationship, with Venus coming into an opposition with Saturn as the week draws to a close, I think you could really propel yourself forward in such a substantive way. Don't underestimate just what you have to give to others. You know, maybe talents uh, and interests you have in a more social or more hobby form could be redeployed in some kind of commercial business or professional context. Or if you're in a professional role, maybe you've been there for a long time, they know that you're brilliant at your job, but you've been there so long, it's too easy to take you for a little bit of granted. Is it time to really be much more dynamic in your approach in trying to get new people aware of you. So that could mean signing up for a digital job agency, getting your CV or resume tuned up for different parts of your skill set. If you have got a musical, creative or artistic talent, this is the time to try to show a lot more self-belief in who you are and what you have to offer. But strangely, this could be a month when your spirits do drop to quite a low point but then they can rebound in quite a substantial way so an exciting challenging interesting month in some ways but in terms of the significance of mars moving into your 10th house and being in that relationship with the new moon in your sign it's perfectly poised for you to really set your sights high and go for it